daylight is always interesting to me. It never ceases to find in my life a place that fits perfectly. Kind of like gears meshing together. Here I am, and here's daily light, like the Word of God, because it, it is the Word of God. It's taken as topical, and it just kind of goes together. And just like gears working together without meshing, it fits my life, and that's why I read it. You know, if something doesn't fit, you really don't want to use it or have it in your life. If something doesn't work for you, don't do it. <laughs> I mean, it seems kind of silly. Now, I do know that, you know, there are, there are people that, you know, will buy clothes one size too small and try to make themselves fit in it, or shoes too tight because they happen to be 10-inch heels, <laughs> or whatever it is, and so they'll try to work it so that they can stand on them, <laughs> more or less. But, you know, really, if it doesn't work for you, don't do it. And that's kind of what I was blessed yesterday to finally share something that was on my heart. You know, I, I was recording a, a video doctrine, you know, it was a one that really had bothered me a lot, you know, about how last year, you know, we were all being so brainwashed by pastors and teachers and most of the country, you know, that no matter what, absolutely, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, everybody supposedly was supposed to vote against, you know, the current president because that was, after all, the godly thing to do, you know, because, you know, Billy Graham said so, you know, and Greg Laurie said so, and, you know, all these different pastors that I personally respect, you know, a lot of their opinions had said so because they said, oh, don't worry that you're voting Mormon, just vote, you know, so that way we're stopping someone else from being in. The only problem was I kind of went, but what if God wants that person in office? And no one ever answered me, you know, and I didn't expect them to. It kind of hurt my feelings that pastors got involved in politics and sacrificed their credibility for the vulnerability of being wrong about what they were promoting as being right. So I had to come out and talk about, you know, all the different lies that went on during the election years, you know, and how false a lot of quote-unquote men of God had made themselves appear to be because they had stumbled and fallen over getting involved in social issues rather than the one issue that could save a soul from hell and that's Jesus. So don't be surprised if you find yourself having to re-examine yourself as well as other people around you to see if they are in the faith or if they're walking according to the flesh. Because, quite frankly, faith was that determinate factor that Jesus proved by his life and his example that you personally could walk with God every day of your life, that you could talk with God every day of your life, that you could live a life that is in communication with God on every decision you make and every circumstance of your life could be doing things that are pleasing in his sight. That's what Jesus' life was all about. That's why from the moment of baptism, when he was baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, to the moment he died, your life was personified in what God wants to do with you because Jesus prayed for you specifically. He said, Father, I don't just pray for those that are in the world, that you would take them out of the world, you know, as though to rapture them and, you know, rescue them from some fate worse than death. No, I pray they stay in the world, but that you would use them according to your will and your way, that they would be doing greater things than even I have done. And, you know, that's what Jesus prayed for you. He didn't pray you'd get out of some, you know, altercation you might be in. He didn't pray that you would somehow, you know, run away from and hide, you know, in some kind of, you know, mass hysteria, you know, escapism. He prayed that you would stand. And having done all, stand and see the salvation that God can bring. And that's why I want, more than anything else, for people to always sit down one-on-one -on -one with God, one-on-one -on -one with Jesus, in the day, talk to him about everything that's going on in your day 
always spend that quality time with him. Because if not, you're going to be deceived. There is no doubt. If, if great men of God like Billy Graham and all these other people could be deceived into trying to tell Christians to vote Mormon, then do you think you can't be deceived too? It's so easy to fail. It's so easy to fall down. It's a lot harder to take a stand when you know what is right and to do what God is saying to do in His sight and to tell everyone around you to walk with God humbly that you might not fall into temptation, that you might not be led into evil, that you might resist and you might be that light even if you're just a candle flickering in the wilderness, a candle in the night. God wants to use you. God wants to speak to you. God, more than anything else, wants to lead you today. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single or focused, your whole body shall be full of light if it's focused on the light. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thine ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you shall go. I will guide you with my eye. Be not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with the bit and bridle, lest they come near unto you. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusts in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy all you that are upright in heart. O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. I am told over and 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 over again. Constantly. I'm told every day. Don't bug God with stupid things or little things or, you know, God doesn't get involved in your life in the minutiae, you know, the little details of life. But didn't we just read that God wants to direct a man's steps? The steps are literally every step you take from the moment you reach your foot out of bed. That is how God treats His responsibility. Yours is simply to ask and you would receive, to seek and you would find, to knock and the door would be open. For if you would ask of God for wisdom, as James has said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who abradeth not, but give it to all men liberally. We are told from the scriptures over and over and over again, you don't have any common sense. You don't have any real sense. The only way to make some sense out of your life is to use what God can do for you, which is speak to you directly. Because otherwise, you make no sense at all. When you tell me that you have the wisdom or the knowledge to just automatically make a decision, all I'm going to ask you is, did you pray about it? Did you? Did you talk to God about it? Did you Did you really sit down and say, hey God, what do you want me to do? You know, here's the left, here's the right. Here's the voice that you're supposed to tell me, you know, like, here's the way, walk in it. So here I got my left, I got my right, which way do you want me to go? The Bible and God and Jesus and the Spirit of God all say, and I'll say myself with them, all say, God will tell you. But you have to ask Him. You see, that's the difference between what man-directed life is and a God-directed life is. That's the difference between wasting time and redeeming the time. You can always tell when man is saying something and God is saying something. Because it's not a question of whether there's an argument or a debate, because there usually is. Somebody will argue and come up with every kind of excuse in the world. They'll throw everything out there, but all you have to ask them is, did you pray about it? What did God tell you to do? Did the Spirit of God tell you that? Really? Cool. Okay. And you leave them to that place because between them and God, that's their personal relationship. That's their own choice to do what God said or to rebel against what God said. And quite frankly, that's your choice and mine.
What did God tell you to do today? Because I already know what you can tell yourself to do. Most people do it every day. They set their routines and say, well, that's what God said. Really? Did you ask him? No. Well, what do you mean you didn't ask him? Well, of course I have to go to work. No, of course about it. Your recourse is to do what God says to do. Your of course is to make course corrections and to change your course if God hasn't told you to do what you're doing. Because you see, man's ways, according to what the Bible says, is not in himself. Even as it says in Jeremiah 10.23, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his steps. That's your call. That's your word. That's the way that you should know you are failing or succeeding with God. Have you asked him to direct your life? Have you? You can trust in the Lord with all your heart. You really can. You can lean not in your own understanding because quite frankly, when you understand it, you're probably not doing the right thing. Most of the time, God's ways are so far beyond ours, we don't understand. You can, in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. It isn't just one scripture. It's all through the scripture. Jesus demonstrated that by His life, by His words, by His deeds, and even by His Spirit that's speaking to you today. Which way will you go? Will you hear that voice telling you, this is the way, walk in it? Or will you go your way as opposed to God's way?